Okay, guys, I'm back. I thought since the last time we looked at all this stuff that I might go back and actually show you the difference between the lead free solder and the lead based stuff that uh, I got from Eastwood. So we're going to uh, put some of that stuff on there and see how that goes. Check everything up real good, of course. I lost my acid brush. <laughs> it's laying. I must all this up somewhere. But anyway, we're going to uh, can it just like they recommended. Let's see how that goes. I'm going to fill in a couple of dents in the sheet metal. We're going to do one of them with the. Uh, piece of the old solder that came uh, off the car. We're going to do a piece of it with the uh, lead free stuff that I've got here and we'll see how that works. So here we go. Get my torch lit up. We're going to heat this until it turns silver, and then we're going to brush it around to tend the surface. I'm using a piece of uh, or copper wool instead of steel wool. But you can kind of see here how it changes color. So that's actually the solder pen or the pigment, that, or the uh, pen that's actually in the uh, solder paste. I have a little bit more on this side right here. I wiped it off before it was ready. I think that was my mistake, my mistake the first time on that body panel between that and it wasn't uh, stirred up very well. Of course, this sheet metal is only like uh, 26 gauge, so it's quite a bit thinner than the automobile sheet metal is. But you can kind of see that I hope the camera's catching it as this stuff uh, gets hot and the silver color actually comes on. It says to take and agitate it with uh, a piece of uh, steel wool or bronze wool. They said you could even use a rag if you had to. put my gloves on for this because this stuff gets pretty warm when you're putting it on there. So we're going to do the uh, part of the lead free stuff that Eastwood sent. It says to heat the rod and kind of heat the panel up just a little. <laughs> Me. This is kind of exactly opposite of the way you solder pipe and stuff. You normally heat the surface of the pipe and the joint, whereas with this, you're actually heating the rod, most of it, and the surface only slightly. So that stuff melts pretty good. It seems to be going down on there better than I had luck before. Now we're going to drop a piece of this on there and kind of see what it does. As you 
see it melts quite a bit faster than the uh, the lead free stuff, and I think that's one reason a lot of guys like the lead better because it's easier to work with, I think. But it doesn't have a way to help risk. So anybody that is going to be trying this, I would definitely recommend go with the lead free stuff. Particularly if you've never done it before, I don't think it's going to be too difficult to learn. And it does look like they will mix. Now I'm going to grab my panels real quick and we'll see how it spotters out. Okay guys, maybe I won't be using the paddles. I evidently put the container away and now I can't find it. But anyway, you kind of get the idea. Uh, the silver definitely melts much easier. I'm sorry, the lead melts much easier than the uh, lead free stuff did. But again, I definitely think it's worth using the lead free stuff because this joint right here, which has got the uh, lead combined with the uh, lead free solder, you can't sand or grind that. So that, in essence, is why I went ahead and took all the lead out of the body, because even if I had repaired the cracks with uh, the lead free solder, you still can't machine that because it still has some lead in it. So even though this repair is a little bit more difficult to do, it can be machined, ground, sanded, Plus, they said the tensile strength on this is much higher than the lead itself. So hopefully, since it's applied correctly and seems to be adhering quite well, there won't be any problem with uh, mechanical adhesion. Uh, let's see what it's... Yeah, I can't even hardly get it to bend in that segment. The good thing about lead versus the... Uh, plastic body fillers and things of that nature, they said was the uh, lead is soft enough, I'm sorry, the lead free stuff is soft enough to where you can actually, if you've got a low spot and you've got access behind the panel, can take and uh, bump it up with a hammer. So I mean it's almost like a body panel if you've got a dent or something like that in it. You can, uh, sorry guys, drop off being all stupid. Uh, you can, uh, oh well, I'll have to hold it. Uh, a hammer from the back of it, just like you would a dent in a, a body panel, and uh, knock it up flush or even higher, and then uh, take that file and file it down or sand it or do whatever you have to to get it level. So, uh, overall, I think I would definitely recommend using this. I'm getting kind of warm in here now. <laughs> uh, so I hope this uh, series has kind of helped anybody that's uh, contemplating using it. Uh, I want to thank Jeff, James Freddies, uh, for recommending this because it's something I've thought about for a long time and I guess he gave me that final little nudge to uh, encourage me to do this. And I've since uh, talked to him on the phone and we discussed this and it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah, there's some work involved with it and it's going to take you a little bit more time to uh, machine it. But I think overall the quality is going to be a lot higher than if I had uh, used a short strand fiberglass. Uh, you know, a lot of guys want to know why I was doing this instead of the all metal or something like that. That is a viable alternative. Uh, but I wanted to know how to do this. Uh, I've dealt with metal for years. I've always liked welding it. Uh, did duct work for numerous years, like sheet metal work. Uh, and I wanted to learn how to do this. I've soldered gutters, uh, which is sheet metal. Uh, and I just wanted to give this a shot. I just wished I had one of those large old school soldering irons which looks like a like a two pound brick of uh, steel with a wooden handle on it and you put it in a big soldering pot and that's what you would heat up or heat it with a torch and that's how you do gutter work and stuff like that before you came up with torches and uh, electric heat guns. Uh, something like that would probably help smooth this down quite a bit more as opposed to using the wood paddles but the thing with metal is you'd have to watch 
by getting it too hot, it would actually embed in the solder and then you'd be stuck. So, but yeah, let me give you another little bird's eye view here of uh, how it looks now. Once we uh, get this machine down a little bit more of the file, I think I'm going to uh, probably get some more of these other real high spots down. And then at that point, I'm probably going to take either my DA with some 80 grit or something of that nature across it. Of course, I'll have my uh, respirator and stuff on. I need to get some new filters for it. That's the only reason I'm not doing it this evening. And uh, try and sand this down lightly, trying to pay attention to where these edges are so that I don't go too deep. I think on the other side, since this used up over half of my uh, body solder kit, I think I'm going to end up cutting a piece of sheet metal kind of like Matt, slow SRT said, to uh, weld into this place to kind of take up some of this void because that's more than deep enough for uh, some body solder to go in there. So if I cut a strip of metal, it will actually lay flat right down into this channel and take up some of this void. There will be less uh, lead-free solder to fill it. And so hopefully between doing that and uh, the other A-pillar, uh, hopefully I'll have enough of the solder to uh, finish this up. So everything hopefully will turn out pretty well. I've still got to go around this edge to get into where the rear window is. Right here with this bronze joint stuff set, they had a little bit of lead in here kind of leveling this out. That may be fun. I think I'm going to leave that till the, right at the very end where I get a little bit more comfortable handling this stuff and uh, making it work. As you can see here, there were a couple of uh, questionable spot welds where they had put the top on the car that I went ahead and welded up. And here's a little bit more of a close-up view of what I did in this uh, gap that was right here, almost the size of my finger. I took a uh, piece of pretty substantial sheet metal and actually welded it up inside here where this outer skin mates up with the inner structure. And then uh, once I got that all welded in place and made sure it was solid, I took my die grinder and rounded that corner off. And I'm not sure if you guys remember what the other one looked like. If you don't, maybe look back at that other video, what that gap looked like before. And I think once I get this filled in with uh, the body solder and maybe a real, real light coat of uh, body filler over it, that should turn out real smooth. Plus, I know it's structurally sound. That's always been an Achilles heel for these cars. Uh, cracks developing right here, and that's ultimately what led to taking all that lead out to repair this. So, with that being said, I'm going to uh, turn the camera off, go back to work, see what else I can get done on this thing, and uh, I appreciate all the comments, uh, everybody watching, and uh, I guess that's it. So, see you guys later. Bye.